Hello, I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and today I'm going to talk to you about staying safe on the ski slopes, whether you're skiing, you're on a snowboard or whether you are just walking and enjoying the slopes um, and being out in the snow. So staying safe out there and what to do should an accident happen and things go wrong. So first of all, if you are skiing or snowboarding, prevention is absolutely key. Um, properly fitting kit, that's comfortable, appropriate for the weather conditions and in great condition is utterly vital. Uh, when you go out, make sure that you have accurate information about your height and your weight because they will need that in order to calculate the bindings and, and how tight and the, what, the right binding settings for your boots. So it's really vital that you've got that accurate because sometimes they have scales and things there and sometimes they don't. And if you've weighed yourself properly at home and you haven't cheated on it, then you will end up being in a safer situation. Um, incorrectly adjusted ski bindings do account for most leg and knee injuries, an awful lot of them. If the bindings are too tight and you fall, your skis um, don't detach and uh, you can end up with some really serious injuries from that. If your bindings are too loose, your skis keep falling off and that can lead to injury too. So make sure they are right. Make sure your boots are comfortable and they fit well. There's nothing wrong with higher boots, but make sure you take the time, you're not embarrassed about putting them back if they are not right for you. They're not gonna fit like a pair of slippers, but they should be comfortable and you need to make sure you're not doing them up too tightly because if you do them up too tightly you'll find that your feet will get very cold and they'll get numb and that's because the circulation is being cut off so ask them in the shop for their advice and their support as to exactly what you should be doing if this is the first time you're skiing okay um, make sure you've got very good gloves and very good socks too and make sure you're mindful of the weather conditions because weather at altitudes changes very, very fast. So you need to have layers. Um, and the general advice is either all synthetic or all natural. So either all your different synthetic layers, one on top, but don't put a wool layer or something in the middle because it doesn't work as well when you do that because um, of the way that the material wicks and takes your perspiration away. So all synthetic, or all natural and make sure you're layered up <clears throat> and you're ready to take layers off and put layers on. So even if you get up in the morning and it looks fabulous and it's scorching hot, or conversely, it looks rubbish, you need to make sure that you are dressed for all the different um, eventualities. And even if it is cloudy, that you have a lot of um, sun cream and lip balm <clears throat> with sunscreen in it, in it as well. Uh, Weather warnings are posted at ski lifts and um, you need to just ensure you read the signs and that you heed any warnings as you are going round. So just be very aware and very alert that things can just quickly come over the top of, of one of the mountains and you can find yourself in difficulty. Uh, if it is icy, do whatever you can to avoid turning on ice because even the best skier is not in control on ice. So look for powdery snow to just keep yourself um, in control. Uh, it's, it's hard work skiing. So make sure that you are um, looking after yourself and you're making sure that you are drinking lots. So if you're able to carry some small water with you, that is a good idea. Otherwise you will need to stop regularly. So keep hydrated and also have some good snacks um, ski jackets have an awful lot of pockets so put some snacks and things in your pocket so that when you're on the ski lifts that you can actually top up your energy levels so don't overdo it because you'll end up making yourself ill um, what else do I want to say so if you are skiing to another resort really important that you make a note of the time that it's gonna take you to get over there and back again so that you have time to get back before the lifts shut. We've certainly been stuck close when you are skiing at full pelt trying to get back um, with the worry that it's getting dark and that the lifts are potentially shutting. 
Um, frostbite, if you see sort of whiter patches on, on each other's faces and you're suddenly aware that there's bits of your face um, or your fingers that are going numb, then you need to stop and go in somewhere warm and just use your body heat to warm them up. Don't be tempted to put very cold hands onto radiators uh, or into very hot water because you can make things, things worse. I mean, hopefully you won't get to the stage of frostbite, but even the, if, but if you did, those little crystals, if you thaw them too fast, they'll, they'll make, um, they'll do damage. So, um, you know, be aware of your fingers and your faces getting cold and getting potential frostbite and do something to warm them through and body heat is best for doing that. And sunburn as well. So look at each other, make sure that you are covering properly with high factor sun, sunscreen, even if it is overcast because the reflection of the snow makes it that much harder and brighter um, and easier for you to burn. And a really good quality lip balm with sunscreen in it, it has sunscreen in it is, is very important. Okay, so on the slopes itself, always ski to your level. So if you are skiing with people that are better than you, yes, you can up your game a bit, but stay at a level whilst you're in control. Um, so don't be tempted to go faster than you know is safe for you. Um, it always also depends on the quality of snow and, and what's going on. Right, the International Ski Federation has developed rules of conduct and they're posted outside all the ski schools and by the ski lifts and sometimes they're on the rear of ski passes. Now that's a code of conduct that they expect everyone to abide by. And um, you know it's important for your insurance too that you are sticking to the rules. You also need to be very aware of your surroundings because you might be in control, but other people may not. And always look uphill before setting off to check that no one is about to career into you. Um, and wear helmets. Helmets do make a difference. They protect you from ski poles, um, skis themselves, and uh, they've saved many of us when you can get clonked on your head as you're getting into the chairlift. Right, okay, so what if there is an accident? So if there is an accident, um, most important with all first aid is that you check that it is safe for you. So before crossing the piste to help someone, you need to look above, up the slope, and check no one's coming down. You need to shout up the slope and get someone to put some cross skis or to alert people at the top that there is an accident over over the, the slope, over the top, over the whatever you call it, the precipice. <laughs> Hopefully not a precipice. So over the ridge. Um, because people coming down at speed may not be able to see. Uh, you need to um, position someone prominently at the top, if necessary, waving and alerting people. And if there is a, a series of crosses that where people and slopes are, are crossing over, then make sure you have people strategically placed to ensure that there are not further accidents. Get help. Emergency numbers are printed on most of the maps and they are available in the ski school. So before you set off in the morning, make sure you have your emergency number or the emergency number printed on your phone. Also make sure that your phone is fully charged and you have a charged up battery pack. And you may well find that your phone um, battery goes down faster in the cold. So do be aware of that. Make sure you have the ability to get help and also to link with other people that you're skiing with if you get lost. Um, response. So first of all, they are lying there. Are they conscious? If they are conscious, talk to them. Find out if they do need your help. It may be that, you know, they're okay. They've just stopped. They've just been doing a really nasty slope, uh, a black run or something, and uh, or some moguls, and they are exhausted. You might want to advise them that possibly it's not the best place to stop. Um, if they are posing a danger. Um, if they are unresponsive, check the airway. So open the airway, check if they're breathing. If they're unresponsive and they're breathing, roll them onto something, into the recovery position very carefully. If you've got other people to help you, then do that together 
because there is a possibility they may have a spinal injury. So you want to avoid them twisting, but it's important to protect their airway and keep that open and roll them onto something to insulate them from the snow. Check the, um, so you've checked that they're breathing. So if they're unconscious and breathing, you're putting them in the recovery position. If they're unconscious and not breathing, you're doing CPR. Um, in terms of circulation, if they've got major bleeding, um, if they're conscious and they're bleeding everywhere, um, you need to cover any wounds um, quickly and apply direct pressure. When it is very cold, it affects your ability to clot. So they may be bleeding more profusely than they would do normally. Um, and if they are unconscious and you have protected their airway, um, so they're unconscious and breathing, you need to then you know, check and stop any bleeding at that point as well. If they're unconscious and not breathing, then depending how severe the bleeding is, the CPR usually takes priority. Um, don't reposition limbs that you think may have been broken unless the circulation appears to be hugely impaired. So if it is very white the other side, then it might be sensible to put them in a neutral position because you don't know how long you're going to be waiting on the slopes. Um, but be very careful how you do that. Um, and don't give them anything to, to eat or drink. And don't give them any alcohol. This is not the place for the St. Bernard's with the, with the rum around the neck. Um, so please don't give anyone any alcohol who's had an accident. Um, so you've alerted the emergency services. They will need to know the location. So the piste name and the nearest piste marker, because that will help them to actually identify quickly how to find you. The number of people injured and the type of injury. And if there are people going past, that are going down to the lifts, then ask them to alert that there has been an accident as well. And when you've been involved in an accident um, on the ski slopes, it is also sensible for your insurance too, to get the name and addresses of the people involved in the accident and witnesses. Um, the place, time and circumstances, the terrain and any markings and signs. I know that sounds like the last thing you'd want to do, but it is good not to invalidate your insurance and to make sure you have all the information in case people need to claim. Now, I really hope you have a fantastic, happy, healthy, safe um, skiing holiday. If you want any further information, we have um, an online first aid for skiing course as well, which is hugely reduced by 85% at the moment. Um, but that's me, that's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com.